The sermon this morning reminded us of the Nobel Prize. You know, from 1901 to 2021, only 58 women have won Nobel Prizes. And 800 plus men have already won. In 2020, for the first time ever, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry was won by two females. Usually it is shared by another male. So someone was interviewed and asked about the gender gap in the Nobel Prize. He said, I'm glad that we are seeing a change in the unfair society. So this is what's happening to our world today. Everything becomes an issue about gender roles. The world calls for equality. No one can truly define what a man is. Now, when you ask someone what a woman is, they don't know. Because the world calls for such subjective idea of equality. They say that gender is just a social construct. Women too must lead. It is time now for women to be the leaders of their homes. The word patriarchy now becomes a bad word. But really, what the world does is to confuse everyone. You know, there is a need to return to the original design of God. There is a need to be reminded of the blessedness of a patriarchal home. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 24. We have read verses 1 to 9 already. That is part of our message this afternoon. We will be reading verses 50 to 60. 50 to 60. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing has come from the Lord. We cannot speak to you, speak to you bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before you. Take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. When Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed himself to the earth before the Lord. And the servant brought out jewelry of silver and of gold, and garments, and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave to her brother and to her mother costly ornaments. And he and the men who were, with her, who were with him ate and drank, and they spent the night there. When they arose in the morning, he said, Send me away to my master. Her brother and her mother said, Let the young woman remain with us a while, at least ten days. After that she may go. But he said to them, Do not delay me, since the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. They said, Let us call the young woman and ask her. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will go. So they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Our sister, may you become thousands of ten thousands, and may your offspring possess the gate of those who hate him. We read in Genesis chapter 24 verses 1 to 9 in our scripture reading a while ago, and we saw the patriarch or the father, Abraham, where we see his involvement in the finding of a wife for Isaac. He was so involved that he tasked his servant to go to Haran and find a wife there and not in Canaan. And so the servant obeys Abraham, the servant goes to Haran, sees Rebekah, you know that it is the providence of God. He followed her in her home. And then the servant saw Laban, the brother of Rebekah. And then the servant narrates to Laban uh, what happened, how he met Rebekah. Basically, Laban uh, narrated to, uh, sorry, rather, sir, the servant narrated the story to Laban just so Laban would understand and Bethuel, the father, would understand that this thing comes from God. Right? Verse 50. And that's what they said, right? Verse uh, 50, both Laban, the brother, and Bethuel, the father of Rebekah, acknowledged that it was the providence of God. That the servant was there because of God. That God has allowed the servant to meet Rebekah. And then verse 51, what was the decision of the father Bethuel? 
plus the brother Laban. He said, Rebecca is before you. Take her and go and let her be the wife of your master's son as the Lord has spoken. You see the blessing of the father, right? It is a common thing to ask for the blessing of the parents, most specifically the father. It is the father who gives away the woman. That is courtship, right? The woman is given by the father. And so the servant was so happy. The servant was so happy. He, he brought gifts, right? And by the way, that is also a part of their custom, right? Specifically in the Jewish wedding, it's called the dowry. Dowry price, bride price. They pay, right? Ganito rin dito. He gave gifts uh, to the parents, even to Laban. And then the next morning, something happened. Right? Nagbago ihip ng hangin. Verse 55. Her brother and her mother said, Let the young woman remain with us a while, at least 10 days. After that, she may go. The servant was alarmed. He told Laban not to delay. So Laban and his mother called Rebekah and let Rebecca decide on her own, right? Rebecca, on the other hand, understood the purpose of God. That's why she said, I will go, right? It is only by the grace of God that Rebecca understood this. But imagine if, he, if she didn't, I mean, the parents just giving the, the decision to their daughter. That's not the custom. Uh, although, meron ng pagpapayag. The, the, I mean, the day before, right? Pumayag yung tatay. So we see here a comparison. Verses 1 to 9 shows the patriarchy, the ruling of the father, Father Abraham. And then verses 50 to 60, we see a fratriarchy, the leading of a brother, right? Which was Laban. The father ruled family, Abraham's family, Provided clear direction. Si Abraham ang nagbigay ng klarong direction. Itong gagawin natin, naiintindihan ko what's happening now. It provided perpetuity to the promise of God. Find a wife for my son Isaac. While the brother-led family of Laban, I mean, they were confused. It was confusing, really. Laban was trying to delay Rebecca's departure despite of the clarity of the providence of God. I mean, they themselves said, oh, that was, that's from, that, that thing is from the Lord. And then natulog lang, nakatanggap lang ng napakarami mga gifts, 10 days pa. Right? We see here, a comparison of what God's design really is, should be, really. And that is my message this afternoon. God's design for every family is to be patriarchal, is to be father-led, father-ruled, or husband-ruled. Again, God's design for every family is to be father-ruled or husband-ruled. Ang pamumuno ng ama o ng asawang lalaki sa bawat pamilya ay ang disenyo ng Panginoon. Now, what kind of father rule are we referring to? That's my uh, first point, patriarchal succession. And ano dapat ang hindi natin gayahin? That's my second point, paternal subordination. Let's consider the first point, patriarchal succession. Remember, God promised Abraham many descendants who will live in the promised land, in Canaan. And so, since Abraham had faith in God, Abraham had faith in the promises of God, Abraham assures that God's promise of descendants and the land will continue. Ina-assure ni Abraham na, okay, ito yung promise ng Panginoon, magpapatuloy ito. Magpapatuloy ang aming occupation of the land of promise. Mag magpapatuloy, magiging totoo ang sinasabi ng Panginoon na promise na nadadami ang descendants ko. Anong gagawin ko? Maghahanap ako ng asawa for my son. That's what Abraham did, right? He was so involved in the succession of his line, of the continuity of the promise of God. 
And as the head of the family, he was so involved. He makes such decisions to direct his entire family. O hindi pwedeng hindi siya papayag na, di, na hindi siya titira ng Cana, na? Kapag walang pumayag na babalik dito, wag na. You're free from your oath, servant. Right? And this is also how every family should be. Father ruled. Husband ruled. Ruled in a way that the father or husband is so involved that the promise of God continues in his family. Of course, Abraham was like this because he believed in the promise of God. Na maraming descendants, he believed in the promise that the land will be given to them. So it led him to act on it by finding Rebekah. Same with us, brethren. Same with us, friends, who believe in the promise of God. Kapareho tayo, na naniniwala tayo sa promise ng Panginoon. However, we're not referring to the promise of having many descendants. God is not promising us na magkakaroon tayo ng maraming descendants. However, it's not a promise referring to the promised land. God is not promising that we will own the land of the Philippines. Forever, hindi po ganon. Rather, the promise of God of salvation in Jesus Christ. Yun ang promise. Do we believe that promise? Do we believe that we are saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ alone? That our sins are forgiven by Him. That our sins have been paid for by the blood of Christ. If we believe that, then we must make sure that the proclamation of this good news must continue also in our homes. And fathers must assume such responsibility just as Abraham assumed that responsibility and was so involved in the direction of his family. Ganon din ang mga ama. Ganon din ang mga asawang lalaki na dapat sobrang involved tayo sa ating mga pamilya na dapat nagpo-perpetuate ang gospel proclamation sa inyong mga tahanan. Again, if you believe in that promise of God, but if you don't, if you don't believe that, that promise of God that there is salvation in Jesus Christ, if you do not believe such, know that we are all deserving of the wrath of God because of our sins. And apart from God's provision of salvation in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we will receive such wrath, such eternal wrath. But by His grace, but by His grace, he gave us Jesus Christ, who lived a sinless life and died on a cross in our behalf. If you don't believe that, ang call ko sa inyo ngayon is to believe it. Because it's true that you are a sinner just like all of us. Kung naniniwala ka na o nga, Sinuway ko nga ang batas ng Panginoon. Totoo nga. Oh yes, totoong tayo yung makasalanan. At ang kasalanan ay may kabayaran. Ito'y kamatayan. Second death to be specific. And that is eternity outside of the presence of God. Kung naniniwala ka, but by just reading the Decalogue a while ago, and you remember your sins by reading it, na nga, uh, totoo nga, makasalanan ako. At sasabihin ko sa'yo, totoo din ang kabayaran yan. Totoo rin ang kabayaran yan. Sasabihin ko rin, totoo rin ang kaligtasan. Totoo rin ang kaligtasan na ibinibigay sa atin ng Panginoon, na ino-offer ng Panginoon ngayon sa'yo. So tumalikod ka sa iyong kasalanan at maniwala ka sa kanyang provision. Ang Panginoong Yesus lamang ang kaya magligtas sa iyong kasalanan. Hindi mo kaya. Hindi mo kaya. And if you are a Christian... You are called to make sure that the gospel message extends to the next generation. 
gaya ni Abraham, he made sure that the promise extends to the next generations. Now, if you're a Christian father, you are called to make sure the gospel message is known in your household. Malinaw yan, sabi ni Paul sa Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. Sabi niya, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. May kakatapos lang niya sabihin sa kanyang letter to the church of Ephesus, after niya sabihin, wives, submit to your husbands, for they are the head of the family, just as Christ is the head of the family, just as the church submits to, the, to, to Christ, so too the wife must submit to the husband. Kakatapos lang din niya sabihin that husbands love your uh, wives as Christ loved the church for he gave himself up for her. After niya sabihin ito, sinabi rin niya, children, uh, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. And then fathers, wow, siningle out ang fathers ni Paul. Of course, it didn't mean, oh, mothers, alis ka muna ha, wala kang papel dito, fathers lang to. No, of course not. First Timothy chapter 2 tells us, he calls out the, the women to, to reclaim the blessedness of their roles at home by making sure that their children grow in having self-control, love, and faith. So Paul wasn't saying, oh, mothers can, should not bring, them, bring the children up in the knowledge of the Lord. No. But he singles out the fathers here. Kasi yung context nito, sinasabi niya una, the husband is the head of the wife. By implication, the husband is the head of the entire family. It means that the fathers must make sure that there is a bringing up in the saving knowledge of God in their homes. It doesn't, need, it doesn't mean that the husband must do the homeschooling, it doesn't mean that the husband must always uh, uh, must be the only one na magtuturo sa kanyang anak. No, but he had to he has to make sure that that is happening in their home. Fathers, bring them up in the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sinabi rin ni Paul dito that children can be provoked. Yes, in many ways. Provoking involves failure of parental guidance by the father. So see, the point is that ensuring that the gospel continues to the next generation is a ministry primarily given to parents. Must be headed by the father, the husband. In fact, it's not the church. Oh, oh, yes, we, we do have such responsibility to make sure that the gospel extends to the next generation. That is true. But primarily, that is given to the parents, to the fathers. Supplement lamang ang mga Sabbath schools, ang mga Sunday schools sa mga church. We should not think na okay, ma-attend naman ng aking anak sa kids Sabbath school, that's fine. Meron na siyang, uh, at least narinig na niya ang gospel for the rest of the week. No. Hindi po, mga kapatid. Ito po ay ministry na ibinigay specifically sa mga parents. And of course, we can say na, paano natin gawin yun? Of course, we... Uh, we apply, for example, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 onwards. That when you sit, make sure that the, that, the, uh, that, the, that the child knows that the Lord is one, that the gospel is, uh, is the way to salvation. When you, when you sit down, when you rise, ibig sabihin, ilagay mo pa sa doorpost yan. Sinasabi to sa Deuteronomy chapter 6, whatever you do at home, make sure that the gospel is lived out. That the child can see the gospel in the four corners of your home. But let me share to you the best way to proclaim the gospel to your children. And let us also extend that being the call is for the fathers and husband ruling in their home 
Let us also extend this also to your wives, to your entire family. The best way to proclaim the gospel to them, to your children, even to your wife, to the entire family, is worship. It is worship. To bring them to worship is to bring them to God. To bring them to worship is to assure that they will hear the gospel. And most importantly, to bring them to worship is to witness to them a gospel-centered, a gospel-centered church-involved life. That's what you're telling the next generation. This is going to be our life, anak. We're going to be at, uh, your uh, parents who have church life. Ganito ang ating magiging buhay, anak. That is how. That is the best way to proclaim the gospel to your entire family. You know, when you want children to learn how to swim, where do you bring them? Pwede sa bed. Practice. Pag water bed. Tama ba? Water bed? Oh, water bed. But really, saan mo sila papupuntahin? Sa swimming pool. Or sa beach. When, we, when you want them to learn basketball, papupuntahin mo ba sa volleyball court? Of course, a basketball court. When you want them to learn the gospel, you bring them to a place where the gospel is preached. Where you, where, where you are so sure that the gospel will be preached. So challenge ko sa lahat. Specifically, sa ating parents. Maraming parents. Maraming married couples. Parents, especially fathers, especially husbands, see to it that your family worships the Lord. See to it that your family does not miss worship. Husbands, see to it that your wife worships the Lord. In fact, that's your primary task, primary role as a husband. Love your wife as Christ loves the church. And then Paul tells us, kung papa, anong klaseng pagmamahal yun? It's a transforming love. It's a sanctifying love. It's a love that changes them. And they can be changed by the Word of God. By the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. See to it that your children attend worship. Again, this falls ultimately on the responsibility of the husbands, of the fathers, who are given the authority to lead their homes. And you know, we become a hindrance to this when fathers or husbands do not heed to the call of God to worship Him. Kung tayo mismo do not expect your wife or even your children to worship God. Kung tayo din ay nagkakaproblema dito, kapatid, kaibigan, we will become hindrance to them. It's like we are the ones who are stopping the children to come to Christ. Whereas Christ was saying, oh, let the children come to me. And there you are stopping the children. What's the difference? Tiron tayo. If we ourselves do not worship the Lord, we become so busy, we, we think that there are more important things to do. We become so busy doing these important things that when children come to us, the children's children, para sa atin sila yung hindrance doon sa ginagawa natin. In Tagalog, minsan, napaparamdam natin, baka, no? Istorbo. Whereas, in fact, sila yung mission. Sila yung mission. Huwag natin yung kakalimutan, kapatid. Of course, not everyone may have a Christian father. Not everyone here may have a Christian husband. Not everyone may have a husband. Not everyone is married. But as church members, you witness also to young kids in the church, too. Singles who want to be married soon. At gusto magkaroon ng pamilya, 
gusto magkaroon ng anak ngayon pa lang value the worship gathering make it something something na hindi mahirap na transition from being a single to now being married you own worship because it's something that you have been doing the rest of your life and then you now there's a change of lifestyle you're now married patuloy ang pagsamba mo sa Panginoon alam ko na maraming I think ikakasal uh, next year 2023 is the year right the year of uh, ano ba of marriage weddings <laughs> so ikaw ay nagpe-pray na ikakasal remember if you are the head of the family you have been given this wonderful this great authority from God to lead your family to Christ you know, in the time of the Puritans, sobrang pinahalagahan nila ang family worship, mga kapatid. As in sobra. And they were in a time na talagang persecuted sila. Na may mga time na bawal sila mag-meet. That urged them na mas lalo talagang dalhin ang worship sa kanika nilang mga tahanan. Mag-family worship. No? Ang tanong ko, kailangan ba dumating tayo sa ganon? Kailangan ba dumating tayo sa ganong pamumuhay? Alam nyo yung mga panahon ng mga Puritans, kagaya nila Richard Baxter, uh, they worship in the morning of the Lord's Day, and then ang next worship nila, Vesper Gabi. Nasan sila ng hapon? Nasa kanyang mga tahanan, yung iba nagbe-fellowship, wala sa black scoop, sila, sila, sila ay... Sila ay nasa kanilang mga tahanan at nagfa-family worship ng hapon. Bakit? Bakit? Kasi meron silang heart for the next generation, for their children. Ganun na lamang. That they really want their children to know, to hear, and most importantly, to believe in the gospel. If we are a, if we are if you are a parent and I know that you are praying for your children I know Kung talagang pinagpe-pray natin ang ating mga anak Anong gagawin natin to make sure that they are dwelling in the word of God Worship with them bring them to church Parents how your heart for the kids, fathers, husbands, do you, kayo mismo, do you diligently worship God? Are we being good witnesses to the young generation? Or are we the ones discouraging them to worship God? Yun ang masakit kung tayo pa mismo ang nagiging cause ng ating pamilya. You know, this is the blessedness of a patriarchal home, of a father-led home. God designed it in a way that the parents, specifically fathers, must look to Christ's compassion, Christ's love, and bring their children to that knowledge of love to Christ. Binigyan specifically ng Panginoon ng headship ang ama. Ang asawang lalaki to make sure that that happens. Oh yes, there will be struggles. There will be struggles, of course. Hindi yun madali. That's why the call is for the husband to always focus on the true head of the head of the church. Look to Jesus Christ and see what he is like. See his headship. How does he give directions to the church? Force ba niya? Or he, does he teach them? Does he feed them with his word? Look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He leads with authority and yet with love. The headship of Abraham is not the only headship we see in this chapter. There are two fathers in this story. We see another father in verses 50 to 60. Second point, or last point is paternal subordination. 
Many times it was emphasized in this chapter that Rebecca was the daughter of Bethuel. And then in verse 50, we see Bethuel, the father of Rebekah, together with Laban, recognizing that it was the providence of God that led the servant and Rebekah to meet. Sabi nila, ni Bethuel at ni Laban, the brother, Rebekah is before you, take her and go. Ayan ha? Meron ng word ang father, go. Okay? The servant was so happy, and as a custom, he provided gifts. Verse 53, sabi doon, to Laban, the brother, and to the mother. After mag, makuha yung yes, yung go ni tatay, kinabuk, uh, after noon, binigay yung regalo kay Laban, tsaka doon sa nanay, kinabukasan, after lang natulog, Laban and the mother retracted the decision. They were now asking Rebecca to stay for at least 10 days. Well, Rebecca ended up deciding for herself, for she too recognized that this is the providence of God. I think, again, we have an obvious problem here. Someone's missing. Someone's missing. The father of Rebecca was missing. Bethuel's missing. In fact, he allowed his son Laban, even his wife, to make such decisions for the family. And by the way, marriage was and is a major decision. So again, there's a comparison here. Abraham, who knew that his authority is from God, became so involved being a father. While obviously Bethuel deserted. This is why we must understand that headship comes from God. Abraham understood it. That's why he, he, he involved himself. He knew that his authority was not something that he earned. His authority was something that was given, delegated by God himself. Obviously, Bethuel did not understand that. Again, this is why we must understand that headship comes from God. And true headship, true headship happens when a father or when a husband leads on God's behalf to provide direction for the family. The man is not there to implement his own laws, his own ideas of authority. The man is there in behalf of God. The woman is there to submit to the husband's authority, yes, but it's an authority that comes from God. This means that if the husband subordinates, that if the husband resigns from his role, it's not that he's just resigning for a, from an arbitrary authority. Rather, he's not heeding, he's not exercising, he's not implementing God's authority. And this also means that if a wife disrespects or takes that authority, she's not really trying to dethrone the husband. It's God whom she is trying to dethrone. This is why it is so important that the head of the family must assume headship. Headship. He must direct. He must make decisions. But no, it doesn't mean that he has all wisdom. Let me just be clear. Nung, nung ang lalak, pag lalaki ay kinasal sa kanyang asawang babae, yes, authority pa, meron na kagad. But wisdom? Oh no. <laughs> authority does not equate to having all wisdom. Right? It means that the husband must also accept counsel. It could be that the wife may have more wisdom. But that does not negate the fact that the husband has authority to direct and make decisions. Proverbs 12, 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Yes, even a man who is the head of the family, who, who has the authority from God. He can indeed, in his headship, he can delegate things to his wife. That's true. Hindi ibig sabihin na, uh, okay, dahil fathers, uh, bring them up, bring your children up in the knowledge of Christ. Okay, sige, ako na lagi ang turo sa kanya every, sa mga anak natin every, every day. Ako na siguro, ako na mag-homeschool. Hindi ibig sabihin ganon. 
the husband's headship means that he can definitely delegate things to his wife. He doesn't need to do everything, but he must oversee everything. And what he shouldn't delegate is his authority. That's what happened. And most importantly, you must, the head must mirror the headship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Which is not an overbearing authority. It is not a loveless authority, but a godly one. A sacrificial one. A loving authority. Ephesians 5, after Paul tells us that the husband, that the headship of the husband is patterned from Christ's headship, he immediately says that it is a kind of headship that seeks the good of the wife and family, that sanctifies the wife and the family, just as Christ sought the good of his own, just as Christ sanctifies his own. That is the headship of Christ that every head of the family, father, husband, must imitate. It is the headship of Christ. If you are a father, if you are a husband, you have been given such authority. And you must understand that such headship is in behalf of God. Dinelegate sa iyo yan ng Panginoon. Kaya hindi mo dapat, hindi ka dapat mag-abdicate sa iyong role na i-delegate mo pati yung authority na yan sa iyong asawa or worse, sa iyong anak. If you have a job now and one day you decided, okay, I'll be there, papasok ako ng office, but you're not gonna do your job. But you're there. It's the same thing. When a father, when a husband deserts from his headship, he may be there and yet not assume responsibility. Challenge ko sa ating mga fathers and husbands, do not desert your headship. Rather, assume your God-given responsibility by loving your family. When I say desert, I'm not talking about divorce. Not talking about separation, those extreme forms of desertion. I'm talking about abdicating from your role as the head. And let us remember that imitating the headship of Christ is not separate from imitating the love of Christ. Because if kung nakikita natin na pwedeng ipaghiwalay yun, then that's a problem, and that's the usual problem that we assume headship and yet without love. Without love at all. Kaya nga sinigurado ni Paul. You are the head. You're responsible of your family. Uh, uh, sa, sa direksyon ng iyong pamilya. Katulad ng headship ni Christ. And then husbands, love your wives. As Christ loves the church. Beware of sin that destroys the headship. And the love at home. Without love, you will be an authoritarian. Yun ang problema, yung sin, walang pagmamahal. Sabi ni William Goge sa kanyang book na Building a Godly Home, he said, and I quote, Where this lack of love is, no duty can be performed well. They that think of love as having little importance show that there is little or no love of God in them at all. End quote. Medyo mabigat yung kanyang sinasabi. If we are patterning the headship, if we think that we are exercising the authority of Christ in our homes, and yet, we're not loving in a way that Christ loves the church, feeding them with the word, making sure that the gospel permeates in the household, then we're not really doing the headship of Christ. There's not really, it's not really uh, the love, nakatulad ng love ng Panginoon na sinasabi ni William Goge. We can't separate that. It should be a loving headship, a loving authority. First Peter chapter 3. Husbands, 
live with your wives in an understanding way. Live with your wives in an understanding way, knowing that they are the weaker vessels. Scriptures recognize that the women are the weaker vessels. Weaker in a sense, emotionally, right? I mean, even in physical strength, mostly. That's how God designed it to be. And so the husband shouldn't just show na siya ay may otoridad sa kanyang tahanan. Rather, live with their wives in an understanding way, loving the wife as Christ loves the church. So how about us, husbands, fathers, when a wife struggles with unsubmissiveness, and that will happen, that will happen. When a wife struggles with unsubmissiveness, should the head of the home shout, speak louder, get bigger, so that the wife would understand submissiveness? Para maintindihan nila kung sino talagang head ng tahanan na to? Should the husband, on the, at the other extreme, should the husband then desert from his authority and surrender if a wife struggles with unsubmissiveness? Sige, bahala na. Pagpapray ko na lang. Ganun ba? No. The blessedness of a patriarchal home is that the husbands are called to love the wife like Christ despite of the unsubmissiveness of the people of God. And by the grace of God, your love for your wife, God may use it, may use such love to showcase the gospel at home. Yun yung kagandahan ng patriarchal home. When, when, when the family is led by the husband and by the father, it perfectly fits, it perfectly pictures the, the gospel to your home. But if you're struggling with, with headship, brother, remember Jesus Christ who assumed his headship. Remember Jesus Christ who assumed responsibility by loving his bride. And most importantly, remember Jesus Christ who did not desert his headship. Remember him who will never desert his headship. Just as Christ gives godly direction in his word, the head of the family must give Christ's directions as well. Just as Christ gave himself up for the bride, the head of the family must give himself up to, must love his wife and his family. If you struggle with this, return to the gospel and stand firm to having a patriarchal home. If you're a single man, Pray. Pray. And see the common standard in the scriptures. Understand the headship of Christ being a single man. Pray that if God wills it, study Ephesians 5. Be counseled. Be with married men in the church. Fellowship with them. Learn from them. If you're getting ready to be married next year, if you're a single woman, pray. <laughs> Read Proverbs 31, Ephesians 5, 1 Peter 3, 1 Timothy 2. Read the scriptures. Be with older women, Titus 2, discipleship. It is the, the older women who disciples the younger women, teaching them to be submissive to their husbands. Be with the church. Let us be a church that cultivates and that promotes headship in the family. Promotes godly submission for wives in the family. Let us be that kind of church.
the gospel brings to mind the beautiful design of a patriarchal home. This is why it is so important that we continue preaching the gospel every Sunday, every Lord's Day. Because pag uwi natin sa bahay, yun yung ma-apply natin eh. The husband will love his wife more, and the wife will submit to her husband more. The love grows, the submission grows, just as we are fed continuously of the gospel. It brings to mind the beautiful design of a patriarchal home because Jesus Christ himself is the head who governs God's house with godly authority and love. All fathers and husbands then must look to God for he is the primary standard of godly fathering and holy husbanding. Let us pray. Great God and gracious Father, thank you, Lord, for this uh, great opportunity to be reminded of what your design is for every home. Thank you, Lord, that father, the father leading, the husband leading their homes in a Christ-like way is the, your design, O oh Lord, for us to see the gospel better. Lord, I pray that you would enable the husbands in this church, the fathers in this church, to always look to Christ and see their good, great example of leadership, of headship. Lord, I pray for the wives here. I pray that they would also look to the gospel, see the submission of the church, and better see the better and perfect submission of Christ to the Father so that they can also submit to their husbands. Lord, I pray for the single men and women of this church. I pray, Lord, that they will not forget these scripture verses, that they will always be reminded of these passages. Lord, if, you, if it is your will for them to be married, oh Lord, I pray that such passages will remain in their hearts that they will always look to the gospel and see that heavenly pattern that you have given all of us. And Lord, save our children. Lord, may you grant repentance and faith. Lord, enable the parents to minister to their children, bring them to worship every Lord's Day, but also be with them in their home and preach the gospel to them not just in words, but also in deeds. And so, Lord, we praise you for your goodness and grace and mercy in our lives. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.